fitness researcher has decided to test the weight loss effects of a sprinting program versus a traditional jogging plan. Each participant engaged in the running programs for three months, but some did the jogging first and the others did the sprinting first. Use the results below on a 5% significance level to test the claim that the sprinting program produces more weight loss than the jogging. Okay, so I've underlined the phrase to test the claim here in the problem because that's the key phrase in the problem that indicates we should be doing a hypothesis test. Now we should look at the data and see if there's anything about the data that would indicate what kind of hypothesis test we should do. Well, when I look at the data, I see there's two groups of data here. And it looks like the data is set up in a dependent t-test fashion. It's t-test because the sample size is small. And I say it's dependent because if you read the problem carefully, it looks like the runners, each of them did a sprinting program and a jogging program. So every subject did both programs, right? And so these are the scores for each program. So this is the weight loss achieved under the sprinting, this is the jogging weight loss that was achieved, right? And they did them in different orders just to make sure there wasn't some kind of, um, you know, a bias introduced by, you know, the first program having the greater effect or something, or the second program having the greater effect. So they randomly uh, determined, you know, what order it would be done in. But the point is, either way, for each subject we have a before and after score, so to speak. It's not before and after, but it's rather sprinting and jogging, and we have the weight loss for each. So the data is dependent because every one of these values is paired up with the um, subject's other values. So, you know, this is the first guy's sprinting weight loss, and this is this, the first guy's jogging weight loss. So they're connected to the person, of course. Some people might have a tendency to lose more weight, and so, of course, these numbers would generally be higher for a guy who has a tendency to lose a larger amount of weight. Where let's say, you know, in this group, you know, this person might have a tendency to keep weight on. And so, of course, their numbers would be relatively lower than this guy's. However, we're not going to be comparing person to person. We're going to be comparing sprinting and jogging. All right, the way we're going to do that is to run the dependent t-test by calculating a row of differences and then basing our t-test on that set of differences. Okay, so the first thing we want to do then is to express the claim. So let's do that over here. So the claim is here that the sprinting program produces more weight loss than the jogging program. So in the last video I did the claim one way that's commonly done. I'm going to do it another way now to show you an alternative method just in case you'd like this new method or this other method better. So if I just read the statement that sprinting produces more weight loss than the jogging, that would mean that the average for the sprinting program is greater than the average for the jogging program. Right? And if we did that, of course, that would make sense to us because it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's just being translated directly from the words in the problem. Now from here, what I can do is I can move this guy over here to make it a subtraction problem. So I can say this claim is the same as if I move that over across this imaginary line where the inequality symbol is, it'll become negative, just like in our algebra classes, right? That would be the mean for sprinting minus the mean for jogging is greater than zero, because now that I've moved this over, there's a zero on the other side. And then this quantity here, right, is actually the same as our statement, the mean for the differences, right? Because it's a difference here, so it's the mean for the differences is greater than zero. So this is our ultimate claim at the end, right? So that's another way to obtain the claim. Um, if you like that better than the one we did in the last video, then this is a good approach to try. All right, from there, we're gonna have HO and HA. Okay, so now for the HO, we're going to look to see if the claim has an equal sign of any sort. If it doesn't, then we're going to let that become HA. So we'll do the mean difference greater than zero. That's going to be our HA, because this is a greater than symbol, and that's one of HA's symbols. For HO, we will, of course, select the opposite idea. So if it's not greater than zero, it must be less than or equal to zero. So that's HO, HA. Our next step is the data step. And for this problem, the data step involves getting an n, or a number of differences, then an x-bar for the differences, so an average difference, and then a standard deviation for the differences. Okay, so that's what we're going to need to have to come up with. And then finally, we'll come up with an alpha that will be given to us in the problem. Now, in order to get the differences, what we're going to have to do is to actually come along here and do subtraction for each of these values. So in order to get the differences, I'm going to actually do subtraction for each of these values that we see here. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. This is a very easy bit of subtraction to do. We're going to do the subtraction just like we see it. So 10 minus 8, and we'll get the answer 2, right? Now, if you notice how I'm doing this 10 minus 8, it's actually the same as the way I did it here, correct? I did sprinting minus jogging. 
sprinting minus jogging. So I'm being consistent with how I wrote my claim. That's very important. If you do sprinting minus jogging in the way you write the claim, then that's how you should do the subtracting. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with a test stat that's on the wrong side of the curve. Okay, 6 minus 4 is 2. 5 minus 0 is 5. 12 minus 12 is 0. 15 minus 8 is 7. 12 minus 10 is 2. 4 minus 1 is 3. 8 minus 2 is 6. 9 minus 11 gives us a negative 2, correct? A negative 2. Okay, that difference is negative because, of course, the bottom number was bigger than the top number. Okay, so that's my little row of differences. Now what I'm going to do, now that I have that row of differences, is I'm going to calculate all these things here. First of all, how many differences do I have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have 9 differences there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the number of differences here as 9. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is get the mean for that group. Now, I've actually done this in my calculator already to fill in the remaining values, so I'm just going to pull that information up for us. So my x bar turns out to be 2.778, let's say, right? And the standard deviation turns out to be 2.86. Let's round it off to 3, let's say. Okay, that's my standard deviation. And then the alpha from the problem is 5%. Okay, so there it is. Now, of course, that these values that I calculated in my calculator, they can be done by hand, but it's just much faster to do them with the calculator. So I'm just helping us out and making the process move a little quicker. Okay, from there, once you have the data, we want to go ahead and calculate our test stat. Since the sample size is small, our test stat formula will be T, right? And it'll basically be T equals 2. And the formula is pretty straightforward. It's X bar for D minus the number you find in HO, which in this case will be zero. Then we'll have SD divided by the square root of ND. Okay, so X bar D is 2.778 divided by the standard deviation for the differences. That's going to be 2.863. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of nine, which of course is three. Okay, now let's work that out in our calculator and see what we get. Okay, so I'll have 2.778 divided by, I use parentheses if you want to do it all in one step, 2.863 divided by, and I'm going to go ahead and use the square root here, even though of course we know the answer is 3 for the square root. We're doing that just to show how you enter all the things into the calculator. So we'll end up with 2.91, 2.91 as a decimal. Okay, so the answer is 2.91. And at that moment, our next step is to take that number and compare it to our critical value. In order to determine our critical value, we have to look at HA and decide what kind of test we're dealing with. In this case, we're dealing with a right-tailed test. So we know that we have a tail on the right-hand side of the curve, which will be part of our rejection region, our BR rejection region. And we're going to try to figure out what value goes there. Now, the value is going to be a T alpha value where alpha is 0 0.05 right all the alpha is thrown into one tail because it's a one tailed test and the degrees of freedom is actually just going to be this number minus one so in this case nine minus one or eight so let's go get this t critical value down here it's going to be found by looking in the 0 0.05 column of the t table down to degrees of freedom eight so let's go there now and get our answer okay so we're looking at 0 0.05 and eight degrees of freedom we find the answer 1.86. Okay, so we found our critical value to be 1.86 from the table, 1.86. And now we're going to place our uh, test statistic on the same curve. And you see that 2.91 definitely lands here, right? And that would be in the rejection region. So because of that, we're going to decide that we are going to reject HO and therefore support HA. All right, now we just have to go back to our claim and ask was our claim HO or HA? And you see that our claim here was HA. So we're going to use this terminology. We're going to say we support the claim. So the sample data, the sample data support the claim.
dot, 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 right? And what's the claim, of course? The claim is that the sprinting program produces a greater average weight loss than the jogging program. So that would mean that it's better to sprint for cardiovascular fitness than it is to um, jog if there is a weight loss at least.